Yeah, hey, we'll, um, get, we'll get it over to you, Josh. Yeah. Stick it in the chat. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going on time. Do you want to end it? Can we turn it over? Mm -hmm. No. It's going live right now. Beginning of every live broadcast is a bunch of people saying, Am I live? Are we live? Is it on? Does it work? Are we live now? Is it working? Can you hear me? <laughs> it's just like the beginning of every uh, conference call is five minutes of people saying, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Does this work? Can you see my screen? <laughs> Did you get the file? Did you get the file? Let me know. I feel, I feel like I'm getting ready to broadcast from the moon. Like I'm, I feel so alone <laughs> in here. <laughs> from the International Space Station or something. We live? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's the official beginning to every live broadcast like is someone are. asking, are we live? <laughs> hey, well, welcome. I'm glad you're joining us. Uh, glad you're taking time in this afternoon to have a discussion with us. You know, these are uh, difficult times. And uh, one of the consequences of this time is the reprioritization and emphasis on technologies that kind of went from being a convenience to being the center of all of our business communications. And so we're going to be adding these live broadcasts uh, weekly uh, during, these, during these strange times, uh, during these times to answer questions that, I mean, a whole new set of questions that, um, that you might have not ever thought about or hadn't planned for that, you know, are being thrust upon us as, as, as business people. And uh, today we are talking all things tele, tele teleconferencing, telemeetings, um, teleworking, and um, at Wired In, our motto, I guess, it's become our motto, is uh, the, the first step to every project is talking to people that know what they're talking about. And so today we have, uh, we've gathered a group of people to have this discussion. Uh, we've got Brandon Borland from FSG. Hey, Brandon. Hey guys. And we've got on Skype, we've got uh, Jake Guptel, who is with OCS Technologies and is an expert in networking. Hey, Jake. Howdy. And also Josh Garagos, Garagos I knew I was going to say it wrong, who, uh, who works with our AV group. And uh, he'll, he'll explain a little bit more what he does, but he works with you know, life size and a lot of uh, video conferencing technologies. Um, if, I, I should say, if you want to participate, if you want to add questions or comments, you absolutely can uh, add them in Facebook or YouTube, wherever you are watching, and we will uh, we will we will get them addressed here and try and try and get them answered. Uh, first of all, um, I guess Josh, uh, kind of tell us a little bit about you know where you are, what you've been, and give us a little bit of your background and tell us a little bit about what you do. Sure. So, so I kind of run our. Uh, AV department up in our Dallas branch. Um, I've been in the AV industry for 10 plus years um, of a CTSD uh, certification, which is you know one of the top levels, you know, accredited levels um, for the AV industry. Um, I've been with the FSG for four years. Um, you know, our primary focus, and especially where you know where it applies most to here, is uh, the corporate corporate environments. You know, rolling out conference rooms, huddle rooms training room with multi-purpose spaces. So I think um, you guys reached out to our team to find somebody that could speak about that. I was certainly probably the, 
the most qualified or one of the better qualified in our in our group to do it. So uh, I just wanted to, to be part of it and, and lend, you know, whatever advice I could. Hey, Jake, uh, why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about what you do, too? Sure. Um, I'm senior uh, IT consultant for a company in the Woodlands, Texas, called Optimum Computer Solutions, or OCS. Uh, we handle uh, anywhere from small business to medium to large business um, IT consulting needs uh, for clients who either don't have their own IT department or just want to augment it with um, somebody who's seen, you know, a lot of different systems and isn't kind of, you know, locked into their own system, so to speak, and just kind of come alongside them and, and give them some consulting. Um, we do everything from simple consulting to complete deployment and everything else. So that's what we do. And also, and also Brandon is with us Brandon and Brandon is and the Brandon head, of, is marketing the head of marketing for FSG. And and he's worked a lot with he's worked a lot with kind of answering this question of how do we keep how do we keep uh, teams that are apart teams that are apart together so yeah. brandon maybe so talk a little brandon bit about what little bit about you guys have been talking about and facing talking during this time facing during this time yeah absolutely uh so yeah i've been leading the marketing department and some of communications here at fsg for a few years now and uh, you know, FSG is a, a company that's got about 30 locations across the United States. We're offering electrical services, lighting, technology, signage, things that help um, facility operators run their businesses, right? Their physical infrastructure and such. Uh, and so for us, uh, you know, one of the great challenges that we have is we have technicians in the field. We have uh, crews that are working all the time, but we have a lot of our office, our sales teams, our leadership teams are trying to figure out how to stay connected, stay connected to the field, stay connected to the customers, uh, stay connected to uh, even their own families to a certain extent if they are um, traveling and working on projects and stuff. So we've learned over the last few years a, a few things along the way, like uh, how to actually connect remotely, what some of the great systems are but also what some of the lessons are, like what, uh, what are some things you need to think about culturally, like uh, uh, how you speak in a call like this or how you dress or if you let the cat run across your keyboard. And we've also learned <laughs> what is some of the technology that you need, uh, both on the individual side and um, on the business side, like what is the stuff you need to invest in uh, at the office. So, um, and, and I think I might be the, the uh, you know, you have to have a, like the, the bad guy or the ignorant guy in the call. And that might be me on, on this call, I guess, because I, I represent kind of that, like maybe the, the management that's trying to figure out w what it is it that we need to do and how do we keep our teams productive and where do we spend money and where do we not spend money and all that kind of stuff. And so um, I hope today maybe I can bring some um, insight from, from that seat a little bit. Okay, we have well established that the ignorant person in the room is me. So that don't be stepping on my. Uh... If you want that role, I'll give it to you. Here, let me hand it to you. So, uh, Jake, why don't you go first? Just kind of talk about. I, I assume a lot of your customers are contacting you about um, distance working, mainly. So, um, so maybe talk about the difference between working from a distance and conferencing from a distance, and. Uh, what customers are asking. Sure. So uh, conferencing from a distance is kind of like what, what we're doing here with, with Zoom um, on this is where you've got a few people that want to get together. They all want to see each other. They want to communicate. They might work on some documents or something like that. That would be kind of the conferencing from a distance. Um, a lot of what we're seeing right now, especially with the Corona stuff, is um, people that want to telework or work from a distance, basically work from home, do their day-to-day -day tasks. That means they're going to have to get into uh, any server resources, uh, uh, you know, at their business or uh, possibly directly on their PC at a business uh, from home. And so we've been facilitating that, getting people remotely connected from home to their resources that are at the office. Um, yep. what, what are some of the biggest drawbacks that people are facing that they didn't think about before? Well, mainly uh, just, uh, you know, the, the connectivity and the technical side of it. Um, a lot of times people have a certain amount of licenses uh, for VPNs, for example, 
Um, you know, they'll have five or 10 if they're a small business that, you know, has been just fine for the last, you know, five years. Uh, but all of a sudden now they want to get all 30 of their employees to be able to remote in from home. And now they've got to think about, hey, uh, we need to bump up those licenses. Uh, we need to uh, make sure that our security is top notch because, you know, with everybody remoting in, you've got, you know, the concern of, you know, bad actors trying to jump in on all those remote sessions. So it, it's the, the licenses, it's the um, encryption end to end stuff like that that we're having to work through so so what's the biggest hurdle for them the biggest hurdle um is i guess that they want it all right now <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like okay all of a sudden you know we don't have two weeks or a month to plan for this we got to have it right now and so it's been scrambling scrambling to purchase the licenses scrambling to uh set up the infrastructure to get everybody in remotely, you know, install if there's an agent that goes on their computer. Um, for smaller businesses, maybe they don't have a VPN router at the time, so they're gonna use something like um, TeamViewer, which we don't recommend, but in a pinch it can work, you know. Um, just something to get everybody in on, on their computers. Uh, we've been deploying a solution called Parallels. Um, it's very much like Citrix, but it has some um, you know, remote into your own PC capabilities. Um, and we can deploy that for, for you know, an entire uh, company and get everybody from home and on their own computer. Um, some, some companies only will have one server. Um, and so, you know, getting everybody in on one server is not even feasible. Um, you know, your lead times for buying a server is probably a week and a half at, you know, and that's just everything's overnighted. So, I mean, if when, when you're talking about getting everybody in right now, today or tomorrow, um, the hurdle is, is getting that set up in, in, a, in a quick, you know, in short order. So, so, I, so I guess, Josh, um, people that are wanting to do things right now, I mean, everybody wants it done yesterday, but what are you hearing and what are you seeing in terms from the um, software kind of hardware side? Well, so... You know, obviously that, that we got the same problem, you know, and, and that's pretty typical. Everybody, you know, wants, wants to get something going and then, and then wait and wait and wait until they need it. Um, especially with today's climate, you know, there's there's people scrambling to, to get people at home working and, and get all these these resources set up and in place. Um, so so that, that's obviously a challenge. It's not just a challenge because of, you know, the inflow of, of you know, requests and needs, but, but you know, manufacturers and, um, you know, vendors and partners, they're, they're going through the, uh, the, you know, the same type of stuff. So the current climate's really kind of unique, obviously, you know, we're all aware of that, but um, in the most part, you know, software, software, a lot of times we can get that, get that person uh, purchased and deployed. Um, and in most cases, that's usually uh, evaluated and set up and in, in the software side happens with the, usually the end user and the, you know, the provider of that, so the, uh, that software package. Hardware, you know, a lot of the stuff's pretty readily available when you're talking about cameras, microphones, um, you know, the components to, to make it happen. Where you start to get into to some of the the roadblocks is when, um, you know, in, in everyday situations where you're trying to deploy systems in uh, conference rooms or huddle rooms, and you have to get get a little more robust resources out there to put them in. You know, we got to schedule guys, so so that obviously dries up the lead time. Uh, so that's you know. And that's kind of where where we're we're starting to learn a lot because you know us as a as a company most of our stuff's deployed in house in corporate headquarters and in, in in that environment. Well, now that hardly anyone's there, there's there's not a huge need for the you know built out conference rooms today. I'm sure a lot of people rethink this after you know after we get get to the other side of this and, and start to you know consider updating or implementing new. Um, you know, conferencing or, or you know, video capabilities so that, you know, when this comes around, they're a little bit more prepared. Have you found that in the um, solutions that you've made, that kind of brings it up, has the emphasis been on conference room to conference room, and now all of a the sudden they're having to connect to people at home, or is it kind of a little bit of both? Yeah, absolutely. It's in, in the, you know, in, in the 
everyday world in the normal world or normal times, um, it's it's usually conference room to conference room or, or office to office. You know, you don't you know it's it's city to city um, or building to building. You know, so it's it's obviously trying to bring those those groups that are separated across regional distances together. Um, and that kind of goes to, to a part that, that Jake talked about is a lot of people will, you know, buy enough licenses to cover their, their facility needs, which that may be, you know, outfitting two conference rooms within their building and then two in their, you know, building in a different city. Well, once this, this happens and, and multiple people need to be deployed, then your, your whole licensing structure needs to be reevaluated and, and make sure that, you know, when you have multiple endpoints, which, you know, an endpoint in, in today's climate is, is someone at their house, you know, versus, you know, one office connecting to another office. So, so that always comes into play. And then, you know, there's the consideration of, do we go ahead and scale up and purchase license for everybody, you know, to, to be able to do this, even though once, you know, we get through this, everyone will be back at the office and work in a little bit normal environment. So that's one probably factor to think about and, and try to compensate. Um, obviously a lot of these softwares if you you know if you go to the skypes and, and some of the zooms and stuff like that offer free trials and you know free limited limited packages so that's definitely something to always consider you know in the event that you know something like this happens you have to have a, a you know a mass remote workforce uh, brandon i guess i'll offer oh go ahead yeah something i'd also suggest too is you know uh, typically you know, a company will have what's called asynchronous internet. Well, they'll have faster speed down than they do up because, you know, everybody's at the office and the lion's share of their internet is going to be pulling stuff down rather than pushing stuff up. Now with everybody at home, you're going to have, you know, that, that up speed is going to be a lot more important. So you're going to talk about either just, you know, increasing your level of bandwidth or going with fiber or something that's synchronous that's going to you know, match your, your up speed to your down speed so you can handle the, the demand for it. So what about if you're at home? Mm -hmm. Same thing? Yeah, um, not so much because, you know, you're, you're just going to be a single user at home. I don't, you know, it's not going to be any more than your typical, you know, Netflix and everything else you normally do. So, you know, if you've got the bandwidth at home to to cover, you know, your four kids on Netflix and everything else, then, then you're probably okay. So, <laughs> so if Netflix works, everything works. Yeah, if, if Netflix on four devices at a time works, you're probably okay. <laughs> well, I, I think later we'll go through it, but I do have uh, the 20 ways to have a good online meeting. I think one of the things is turn off Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Brandon, uh, from a team standpoint and from a manager standpoint, um, what have you been finding and what have you been trying to do to try and keep people together? Well, you know, it's, 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 I don't think any of us could have predicted uh, that we would be sitting in this environment um, four weeks ago, in all honesty. I mean, I, I know that there were some, yeah. some indicators out there of things that might be coming, but I don't think any of us expected this. And at the end of the year last year, one of the things that, that I read as I was wrapping up the year, uh, specifically around our industries that we serve in, at FSG, was um, that businesses like uh, contractors and the like uh, should really be investing in communications and be investing in technology uh, at this time, and, and that that's really what's going to carry businesses moving forward. And and we made a few strategic decisions around communications and technology, and, and, and that's really kind of um, paying off in this moment um, because... Uh, we have, uh, you know, we have some tools that we probably wouldn't buy otherwise, you know, right now with a little bit of a downturn in sales or a little bit of a downturn in work. Um, but we had those tools. We bought those tools during some 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 good times, and 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 they're here to use now. And and I think that that's probably one of the lessons I've taken more than anything is that um, investing in communications when you can, investing in the technology when you can, uh, is I, I think wise. I think um, being prepared. Yeah for, um, you know, I work out of the Houston area and in the Houston area, we have a hurricane season. And so uh, hurricane season can mean no electricity and no water and no gasoline for a week, two, three weeks at a time. So I'm always kind of thinking as we get into the summer, what should I be prepared for? And um, when a company can invest in those downtimes and in, or I'm sorry, in those good times in communication tools and in uh, technology tools, it's, I think it's wise. 
And, and then from that, it's, it's understanding once you have the tools, okay, how do we build the culture where people feel comfortable doing this? I mean, this, is, this can feel awkward. It can feel weird, but it, it doesn't have to, um, especially if everybody's willing to, to get in and, and work together on it and, and understand that um, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, that there's all sorts of levels of production value, right? And I love this call that we've got today because we've got four really, I think, good examples of different ways of doing it. You know, we've got yeah. um, a really, really simple way of doing it. We've got a uh, little setup we have in this room is a little bit more complicated, but but uh, you could go this route. Um, but if I needed to, I could go down to my car down in the parking lot, put in uh, an AirPod, and, and we could have a good conversation. So I think relaxing a little bit and understanding that it, it can be a number of different things is really key on the culture and the just getting comfortable with this. And I think that managers need to lead by example during this time period. They, they need to be prepared to, to do this sort of thing, um, to be prepared to, to try the technology, even though it's a little intimidating sometimes. <laughs> um, and they need to be prepared to, um, to make sure they've given their people the tools and the equipment and, and the connections or whatever else is needed, um, especially when times are good and, and the, the sales are up or the projects are running well, so that when things are down, um, it's, uh, you're a little bit more prepared. That's a really good point. Um, maybe to Jake and Josh. So I'm a business and I want to be prepared. I, this is going to go on for a while or I don't want to be caught unawares by this. What are the kinds of things I invest in? Is it scalable bandwidth? Is I mean, what are those, what are those investments that I make now that, as Brandon said, kind of prepares me for this future? Uh, go ahead, Jake, and then Josh. I think the first thing you do is you start a conversation with, you know, your trusted IT consultant or, you know, whatever IT firm that you're using, whether it's the in-house guy or whatever, you start there because um, every company is a little different. Every company has different resources already. So you start with somebody who knows you, who knows, you know, what you've got and start the conversation and say, hey, this is what, what I want to get to. What's that going to take? Uh, this is what I want to get to you know, by the end of the month, this is what I want to get to by the end of the year and, and just kind of start planning with the people you already trust. And Josh, what about that? Yeah, so I think, so, so one thing just to kind of put some people at ease uh, that I've seen over time is uh, a lot of people got scared with video conferencing because in the, in the older days and not too much older, you know, within five to 10 years, uh, you used to have to put out a massive investment to, to have video conferencing. There's a lot of head in gear, um, stuff that was centralized and you had to buy hardware components. Um, and it was a really complex integrated system. Well, with, you know, with kind of the rollout of a lot of these software solutions, you know, the Zooms and the Teams and GoToMeeting, um, that that cost has, has come down quite quite a lot. Uh, now, a lot of people, the, the kind of, issue that we run into is people see that and they say, hey, well, I can run Zoom on my phone or run, you know, have a meeting on my laptop with, with Teams. Can I, I want to do that in a big conference room. Uh, that's where I think kind of an integrator or somebody that, that has knowledge of, of working hardware uh, would come in and, and, and adds a lot of value because you can do that, but it's it's not, there's there's not yet a ton of off the shelf, easily deployable solutions, but but you can do it and they're they're getting more and more common because people are start, starting to see that need for you know in-room deployments and, and so where we can take the software kind of off of someone's laptop and make it you know make it so you have a nice camera with, with a little bit of you know production quality and, and good you know good audio pickup so you're you can host a meeting with you know eight ten twelve people and, and beyond um, and and that's where we you know where I come in with on the uh, hardware side of it is we can help design those systems and give some of those features of one touch um, where they can come in and have a meeting set up and just push something on a little panel and it starts up and it, and it takes all that headache and chaos out of trying to get a meeting started. So um, I think, you know, once we get through this and people start to, to reevaluate their, their communication needs, that's, that's something to certainly keep in mind is that, is that it's not nearly as costly um, and equipment burdensome as it used to be you know you can do a lot of stuff with software and you can add some key components to make it a better experience for for the users um especially from a you know from a uh, you know corporate facility side you know point of view so i think that's one thing to to kind of try to highlight to people is, is it's not nearly as painful as it used to be to 
to have video and collaboration services um, mm -hmm. or, or or audio, you know, integrated audio conferencing for that matter. Well, I, the term that you use, Josh, that I think is really important is the integrator, right? Um, it's not just about like uh, a, a contractor or a um, or a, a technologist. Even it's it's an integrator that understands how the AV works with the technology, how it works with the even lighting systems and HVA systems, HVA systems, I can't speak, HVAC systems <laughs> and other building components. Um, when you bring an integrator in and, um, and you don't just ask for the display in the conference room or the camera, but you ask what is the right display, what is the right camera, what is the sa right sound system, and then how is that also going to work with my... Um, my, my traditional technology systems. So um, both Josh and Jake, both I, I know are, are integrators in that they, they look at the whole picture and um, they're, they're looking at the whole picture to understand. And, and Jake, I, I, that's one question I have for you is, um, you know, from the business side, because that's really what we're, we're dealing with two things here, right? We're dealing with the individual at home and we're dealing with the business in, in the physical building that the business may own or operate, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so fr from that end, you know, one of the things that uh, kind of bubbled up on, on our end in our office was if we want more bandwidth and more capability to connect or have people connect remotely, some of our Internet of Things devices need to be managed better. And so having a true technology integrator who can look at, well, what kind of alarm system do you have and what kind of, you know, all that going on do you have, um, you know, and can really say, okay, we need to VLAN this and we need to do this. We need to make sure this is right. Talk to me a little bit about that. I mean, from your perspective, what does it mean to be a technology integrator um, that's looking at the whole picture? Right. So you definitely need to, you know, take a look at, especially like Internet of Things um, and then all the little devices everywhere that are going to be pulling little bits of bandwidth um, and, you know, may have security concerns as well because, you know, all of those little devices, you know, your ring, your, um, your HVACs and building management systems, all of those um, are, you know, have great new modern tools where you can, you know, turn your lights on and off from the parking lot and, you know, see who's at your door and it makes it convenient. But a lot of those companies, you know, their push is for convenience and they're not necessarily thinking about security. Uh, a consultant like us, we have to come in and we have to be concerned with the security of the business, not just the convenience. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll come in and we'll say, hey, we, we need to separate your devices that are not uh, insecure from your uh, business machines and from, you know, uh, the machines that have a proprietary or sensitive information on them. Um, and that's where a consultant like us or, or, or or Josh will come in and they'll be able to give you a whole picture of, hey, this is what you have now. Uh, I know this is where you want to get, but in order to get there, we're going to have to be mindful of this and this. Um, something else, especially uh, for people who are moving their people to work, you know, remotely, is they may have, you know, IP security for their punch clock systems. And now that they've got everybody remoting into their PCs, you've just defeated that security. So you're you're either going to have to come up with a plan. Hey, we're you know for this time when everybody's working from home, we're not going to worry about you know people punching in from home. And we're going to address that when it, you know everybody come back to work, or you're going to have to come up with another solution to address that. So that's a great point, and I think one of the things that is um, really important in all this, you, you just kind of touched on it, Jake, is culture process shift right because you know, we're talking technology here right we're talking hardware and pieces and all that stuff we're talking about overall picture of what your hardware and your it your technology av landscape looks like but there's also that component of culture and process right and i think that that's been the other thing that's been a real um i don't want to say challenge by any means but it's definitely been something to think about like, how do you go from a world where we're all used to walking into an office, or where most of us are, um, to a world where nobody's walking into an office? I mean, my, I've got, you know, children at home, and they're all at home right now learning remotely, right? That's never happened before, where they're all at home learning remotely, and their <laughs> teachers are teaching remotely. 
So we've had a little bit of a culture and a process shift even, right? And I think that's one thing that's really important, Brent, that um, from a management perspective is to help your people through that culture and process shift of remote work, right? Um, it, it's not to say like, hey, I expect you to be out of bed by 8.30 and be at your desk by nine o'clock and you better stamp the clock. But it's more to say, you know, hey, let's make sure that our video backgrounds are looking good, that when we do these conference calls that we don't have the cat laying on the keyboard and that we mute, uh, <laughs> mute when we're not talking, um, you know, so other people can have the floor. Uh, and things like that. And, and, and that's a kind of a culture process shift, just like maybe having to suspend clocking in, clock out rules for the time being. We have to get a little bit more creative and think about, well, how are we going to have uh, that weekly financial meeting uh, while we're all sitting at our kitchen table with potential kindergartners sitting next to actually real kindergartners. I know a lot of us feel like we have uh, proverbial <laughs> kindergartners sitting next to us every week, but we have real kindergartners. So, sitting so if next you have a now. baby, <laughs> if you have a baby at home, that's a potential kindergartner. Well, uh, what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Potentially, you're, one not, day. you're not making a comment as to the maturity level of your employees, right? I'm not making that comment at all. <laughs> I wouldn't go there. <laughs> You know, that kind of brings it up. And one of the things, we, we have a document that we shared. It should be in the notes if people are watching this. It's, uh, I think we're up to 21 now, 21 ways to make your conference better. And one of we them is 21? own your environment. <laughs> yeah, we're up to 21. Awesome. Uh, one of them is own your environment. Uh, you know, don't start the... Don't start the meeting and try and pretend like you're in an office when everyone can hear the Starbucks baristas calling out orders in the background, um, or everyone can hear your dogs, or everyone can hear your babies crying. I mean, own your space. Say, you know what, guys, I'm I'm in the I'm in my office. I've got my daughter in here. You may hear my daughter, uh, or or you may hear my dogs bark. Uh, I apologize ahead of time, um, but uh, you know, own it. Uh, you can't really. Um, you can't really try and hide it. Uh, we've all seen the internet fails with, you know, the kids walking in and the person leaving the phone on with the video going and going to the bathroom and all of the things that happen when people are trying to, you know, kind of fake it. Um, so, you know, and speaking of things going wrong, uh, <laughs> Josh, <laughs> that was a bad segue. Um, if, if these you're projects right. go, do go back, wrong, right? I mean, where is it that they usually go wrong? <laughs> Well, if you can hear the vacuum running in the background, that's that's one place. I, <laughs> I guess lack of communication with the people that are in the house, you know, when they, when they do a podcast or something, but forget. Uh, I mean, to me, it's, you know, working working from, you know, remotely is, is becoming more and more commonplace. Um, I think I think most people's um, comfort level with it and ability to deal with it is, is right or wrong, getting, a, you know, getting a little more, uh, acceptable to me common sense you know is, is, is always reigns supreme if you're you know if you're you know you're going to be on camera and you know you're going to um you know be be speaking and have your mic open you know close your door try to you know try to set up that shot you know as best as you can for the environment um, talk to the people in the house let them know hey, i'm doing this from from that time to that time and and shut that down a um, couple notes on here i noticed are ones one that i would have said um, really from a an integration or a, or a, you know, operational perspective. Audio is always the most important um, in a conversation or in a in a meeting in some kind of remote meeting. So you know, keep that in mind. If you're having trouble connecting video or you know your video doesn't look great or or you do have you know clothes hanging up in the background that you're trying to get dry, then then maybe forego the video sometime. <laughs> uh, as long as people can hear you and you can communicate your message, that's that's what is most important. And that kind of also you know aligns with with bandwidth, you know, some people don't buy the one gig package at, on, on their internet. They may have, you know, 30 gig and everyone is home and playing on other appliances. So your, you know, your, your camera starts to stutter some, you know, I, I think, I think remembering that audio is, is king when you're trying to, to communicate is, is one thing to, to, to keep in mind. So on that, and just like, you know, going back to common sense, just, you know, keep it, try to, try to operate and function like you are, you know, would in a, a normal meeting right in front of everybody, you know, use, you know, be courteous, use respect, you know, you, you, you've probably seen the lists of, or videos where people are trying to start a meeting and everyone's like, hey, check, check, are you there? And, oh, you know, starts talking over everybody, you know, you know, you know, when someone opens up the mic and, or, 
and, and takes tries to take roll call, have some patience, don't try to chime in because you know somebody else is going to, you know, kind of, um, that's a big thing to me is just, you know, a lot of it, it, it starts to get kind of, kind of muddled when you don't know what everyone's doing and, and when they're going to do it. So just try to have some patience and, and common sense. I think it's, it's, you know, a newer trend in, in the overall corporate world, but I think it's certainly uh, more and more people are doing it, more and more people are getting used to it. So. Uh, well, we can go through this list and I think as we go through it, everyone can kind of comment on these. These were some of the ones that we sat down and thought of this afternoon. Um, the first one, and you guys are doing a good job with this one, is know where the camera is. I can't tell you how many times I've been on one of these meetings and someone's staring at the wrong end of their phone or their their phone is flipped to the other side. Well, you, you know, I'll, what, I'll what are some of your tips for talking into the camera? Oh, go go ahead, Brandon. No, 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 you're good. Uh, you, because I'm the one that that said, hey, I can't find the camera. Where's the camera in my room? I mean, I, I love that. Like I said earlier, we've got like four different setups here, right? We've got Josh and Jake, you know, uh, in their setup. We've got, you know, me. I think you can tell there's probably a little bit more going on in my setup here with this microphone. And uh, you've got Brent with his setup. And and I think in each of those, you can kind of see uh, a, a different level, right? It's all good quality and, and it's all good communication happening. And I think that can give people a little bit of a comfort level. But, you know, in, in my setting here, I've got a camera across the room and, and I had to ask for them to come in and put a, a, a post-it note so I could see it because it was kind of dark and hidden in the back corner. <laughs> and I think sometimes it's just that simple. Sometimes you need a little reminder because it's, it is, yeah. it's kind of hard to, I don't know, you can be sitting at your desk really comfortable, sitting at home on your couch really comfortable and forget, you know, oh, I'm online. <laughs> I'm in a meeting with people. <laughs> so sometimes just putting a post-it note on your computer that's like, hey, dummy, you're online, and then taking it off when you hang up. And, and the other thing, too, I would add well, is, is um, that it, it, it helps a lot if you have a good idea of what it is you want people to see. I know that that sounds really weird, but if you don't think about it yeah. before the beginning of the call, <laughs> like, what do I want them to see? Do I want them to see my ACDC shirt and my hat on backwards? Probably not. Like Josh said earlier, turn off the camera. Do I want them to see that I'm professional and I'm engaged, especially if it's with a customer, right? I'm probably going to make sure I have the camera on and that I'm looking square at it, even if I've got that post-it note above it to remind me. So I think thinking about it beforehand, really, really critical, even if it's just for a minute. <laughs> no, absolutely. And everyone's tendency is to look at the video, and that's not where the camera is. Yeah, so when you're exactly. talking, look at the camera, not the video. Exactly. Well, and you brought up where in a lot of different situations, you know, Jake's video looks great, but he's at home, and he ran to Home Depot about... <laughs> half hour before this jake explain your uh setup there because you look great yeah i just i just picked up this little it's just a panel that you can buy in a four by eight sheet at home depot and it's got you know a, a <laughs> faux wood wooden <laughs> slats on one side it's 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 only about a quarter inch thick overall but and i think this is just a vinyl vinyl on this side i don't know but it looks good you know, saying, just, that, that looks like a professional came in and did that. I think you really paid somebody over there. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's it, it's just standing there. It's a four by eight sheet. I didn't even nail it to the wall, so it's that's all I needed though. Just, just something back there, so it, it didn't look like a blank white wall. On that topic, Josh, maybe you could talk to how important is it for the background to be simple and possibly not having motion in it. It's. I mean, it's it's very critical i mean obviously you know from a hardware perspective the way you know cameras and frame rates work if you have a lot of busy stuff and squiggly lines and you know you've got a, a shirt with you know pokey dot pokey dots and, and paisley and, and bright colors it's gonna it's gonna affect the sensors in the cameras so um you know typically a you know s solid color shirts usually ideal um you know cut you know a, a lighter you know lighter to medium shade um you know like you said, something in the back that's pretty static, not a lot of a lot going on. Um, obviously, you know, if, if somebody's going to be working from home remote a lot, I would say make an investment in, in a, 
you know, some kind of overhead lighting and, and some kind of backdrop and, and kind of dial it in. And so for a couple of reasons, A, so you know that it looks good, B, so it's consistent. If you're having several meetings and you're, you know, you're talking with, you know, the same client, you know, maybe multiple times over the course of a week, you don't end up with, you know, a stack of papers one week. And then, you know, like I said, you know, laundry hanging in the back, you know, keep it, try to keep it consistent. So, so as you talk to people multiple times, they, they kind of get the same feel for it. Um, in my defense, we just started working from home yesterday. So I had to, to scramble to find a camera, get everything set up. So that's why mine's not as beautiful as Jake's. But, uh, it will be next week. Well, well, and that, that brings up another point. And that is if you're using your laptop for the video, raise the laptop up. I, I, I have next to my desk, uh, like a shoebox size and it gets the laptop. So the camera is eye level and you're not looking at the least flattering angle possible, like looking up at you like that. So I'll put the, put the keyboard and the whole computer kind of up on a, like a little platform, but you guys are doing a good job with the camera coming straight in. Yeah, and, and and for people that are that are working from home that, that do do if, if, that do run the meetings off of their laptop, it, it makes sense to to make a small investment in a, in a better camera and a better microphone. Um, they're they're not expensive, especially for stuff that you're using at home. But it it you know just one step up is makes a world of difference versus using your um, laptop camera and microphone. And, and to your point, you have to adjust that a little bit differently because it's you know they put it there for a convenience. But if you're if you're really having you know serious meetings especially in the workforce where you know you're, you may be trying to close a deal or trying to understand you know, what customers needs um, the the most you know the, the better you can make that obviously it, it, you know from a business perspective it, it helps it shows that you pay attention to those details and you, you know you have the capabilities of doing it you're not just you know like you said sitting on your couch slouch back with your camera <laughs> or your computer leaning back in your lap so um, you can you can certainly get high end stuff and, and go all out and make it you know make an amazing studio, but it's not it's not required or not even you know recommended because you you know most people don't have that type of space in their house. But you can spend a few bucks and get a better camera and a USB microphone that that'll certainly enhance the experience. Well, that kind of brings up the next point and it, which is number four on the list, I think, is that audio is more important than video. We'll put up with bad video, but bad audio, everything comes to a comes to a standstill, um, right? Well, and I think I, I think I would add to that that it's not just like bad audio; it's distracting audio, right? So it's um, yeah, we all have a different definition of good audio versus bad audio. Um, you can have somebody on a microphone like like this one, but if if I'm constantly like rubbing it and tapping it and hitting it and, or my cat is crawling on my back or even in a work environment, the, the desk phone is ringing uh, regularly, that's going to be distracting. And, and so I think that's the better, maybe a better descriptor from my perspective is, is, um, and I'm failing to look at the camera as I'm saying this, but maybe that's the better descriptor is not distracting audio. So do everything you can to minimize what's going on behind you. Um, do everything you can to to minimize the um, the distractions from the sound and keep your audio consistent. Because once I've gotten used to you sounding a certain way, then I'm good. And I think that's most people out yeah. there. Yeah, and um, the next one on there, and we've talked about this a little bit, is use the right medium. So if this should be an email, make it an email. If this should be an audio call, make it an audio call. If this needs to be a video call, then make it a video call. But, uh, but, but use the right medium. There's nothing worse than being in a meeting that should have been an email, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and also that brings up uh, another, th an another topic, and that is don't discount things like Google Docs and Slack and communications tool like that. I mean, that is a telemeeting tool as well, and probably a more effective tool for in some situations and with some um, some kinds of some kinds of information. Um, Jake, how do people work in terms of their licensing to be able to uh, share docs like that? 
Well, if they're using uh, G Suite, you know, and they're using their uh, Google Drive and Google Docs, that's one thing. A lot of businesses, I would say the majority of them are using, um, you know, uh, Office products rather than Google products. You know, they've got Word, Excel, Outlook. Um, a lot of them will have it, you know, through 365 uh, in the cloud um, that offers Microsoft Teams as a way to collaborate and work on documents, um, you know, from remote locations. Um, but, but there again, it's just, you know, whatever, whatever you're using, I'm sure there's a way to, to get there. Um, you're going to use, you can use Trello that integrates with G Suite and some other things. So there's um, just a, a bunch of different we'll ways to do it. Yeah, as we're mentioning these technologies too, we'll add them to that document and uh, we'll add these resources and, th and that document can kind of grow as we're talking using the right medium for the right information. <laughs> well, and Brent, I, I had a couple add, on here that I wrote down. Oh, yeah, go ahead, Brennan. No, no problem. I would add as like from a management perspective, I, I think one of the things that we can do a better job as uh, leaders and in, in, in business operators is communicating with our IT teams and understanding, yeah. you know, that all of us have the thing that we know, right? And, and if I go talk to Josh uh, about a, a project, he may think about it from an AV hardware perspective or from an integrator perspective. If I talk to Jake, he may think about it from a security perspective. And so we all kind of come from with our perspective of what we understand. And what I found is that, um, you know, when we, when we go to, to our IT teams, when we go to our IT professionals, if we can kind of clearly explain what it is we want to do, right, not go in and tell them like, hey, I want to use Excel and I want it to work like this, but rather say, I need a platform where I can do calculations and I can present numbers and I can share that with multiple people very easily versus going in with an idea. It's kind of like if you go to the auto mechanic and you say, hey, uh, the car is making this noise and I think you need to replace the front right brake. The mechanic's going to replace the front right <laughs> brake, even if that's not what's making the noise. And um, the I think when we're talking, not just with IT, but any of our teams that are offering us services and support, being able to go in and, and tell the story of what we're trying to accomplish clearly and then let them use their expertise and use their knowledge to come up with the solution and bring it back to us. I think that's really important. And, and, and so right now, thinking about the stories, I need to be able to connect to my people quickly. My people need to be able to uh, have a sales call and demonstrate something, right, and show it. What, what would be the best way for us to do that versus... I want to get a camera and I want to get an audio thing and I want my sales guy to be able to do that. go tell them what you're trying to accomplish and let them use their expertise to yeah. come up with the answer. That's made a big difference for me over the years. Well, and, and one I think thing that's to, a good to kind of, Go ahead. Is it, to add on to that, but, you know, being an integrator, I think one, one thing that's important when we, when we talk with clients is, is kind of the opposite of that, not going in and expecting what they say to be, be exactly what they need you know mm -hmm. we need to go in a lot of times we we may deal with the IT team that, that knows a lot that's going on but we also may be dealing with you know the office admin that's been you know responsible for rolling out their AV you know their AV systems and IT systems that and Sally doesn't have a clue what you know what you know how to spell AV so going in and understanding that a lot of the people <laughs> that we're dealing with may not know what they want you know they may have seen you know zoom and that you can you know talk with somebody that's at home but but they don't know what, what all capabilities are there. So one thing that, that I try to, to keep in mind and, or, or if, you know, if a, an end user is listening to this to keep in mind is, is make sure you, when you talk to integrators, find one that will, will help get you from point A to point B with the understanding that you may not have all the answers and, and let that person guide you. Mm -hmm. And the second part of that is, is more and more, and, and I'm sure Jake can, can confirm this, but AV used to be kind of its own little island, and, and IT was its its own thing. Well, that's that's not really the case anymore. So if you just hire someone that's specifically a an AV contractor, they may be come in and be able to you know talk everything up. But one important thing to look for in my mind is somebody that can can talk IT. You know, they don't have to be a network engineer, but there's so much stuff that, that blends together. It's it's important that you have someone that's knowledgeable enough to. To communicate with your IT department or, or help help configure those devices because 
a lot of times traditionally AV contractors are, are hardware people. They'll go, you know, mount a TV and hang up a camera and connect it. But as far as getting that online or getting the, the right credentials set up or getting VLANs or network stuff figured out, they're, they toss their hands up and say, well, get your IT group to do it. Well, a lot of IT groups aren't AV people, so they don't necessarily have a clue. But if you can find somebody that, that A, can talk the language and B, can, can help bridge that what's typically, you know, an, an adversarial relationship. Um, somebody goes in and understands and can say, hey, you know, you know, and, and, and early adoption, I guess, is a lot of times, you know, important. So I think those three things about, you know, picking the right people to help, help your projects be successful, or your deployments be successful um, is important. You know, somebody that can, can talk the talk, somebody that's there to listen and, and help guide you what you need and, and getting, getting them involved early so that you mitigate some of those problems that you run into at the end when it's done or, you know, IPs aren't set or whatever, so. And I would say don't be afraid to, to pull multiple vendors in too. I mean, if you've got an, an AV vendor, an IT vendor, a phone vendor, and you know that whatever project you're working on is probably going to touch all three, call them up and say, hey, well, let's get together on this date. Let's all three get together. Let's bring in, let's get this accomplished. That way, you know, you got everybody who knows their piece being able to work out what they need to work out to get the project done. Absolutely. I'm going to illustrate one of the keys to uh, having a good meeting. And on the list is have a backup. And um, my earbuds just died. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to switch to wired, which, uh, which, which is one of the things, because if, if you're... Um, Earbuds are going to die. They're going to die right in the middle of the meeting. So just letting you know. Uh, so now I have a backup and I can hear. <laughs> uh, so I always have a backup. And, and one of the other ones is always be plugged in if you can be. Because um, if a battery is going to die, it's going to die during your most important meeting. Well, Brent, I don't know if it'll make you feel better or not, but my keyboard died, so my 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 keyboard. <laughs> yeah, so. Meetings use up twice as much energy. I just need the mouse, though. We should be good. <laughs> uh, I had a couple quick ones, and these are actually really big ones. Um, if you're going to share your screen, clean your desktop. I, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a meeting and somebody has gone to their screen and shared their desktop and there are files on their desktop they probably shouldn't be sharing with the team. So uh, one of my suggestions is have someone make a desktop for you that's just your company logo, put it on a second monitor, share that monitor so you know you don't have um, you don't have everything <laughs> showing. And on that regard, turn off your email turn off your notifications. Um, I won't mention the name, but I've been on meetings with executives and they're getting emails and, you know, there's sensitive talk of topics popping up in email topics in the bottom right-hand corner of their screen. Um, and on that regard, close your email because I've seen, um, I've been in meetings where they've, uh, you know, cut to the screen and it's, and it's their inbox. And, um, you know, you don't want like a topic, you know, you know, four departments we're going to be cutting funding from, you know, on the email topic list when you're on there. I was actually in a meeting and they had left that on the whiteboard um, when the next team went in for the meeting. Um, you know, clean off the, you know, everyone has that one folder on their desktop that's like companies coming or stuff or the closet or something. And you just, you know, stuff all those icons in there for the meeting. Um, and here's, here's an important one that just came up this week. Um, I think it's really important if you're going to be doing these meetings to understand how time zones work. Uh, <laughs> especially, <laughs> uh, we've had, we've had, we've had problems with meetings showing up and, uh, uh, is that central time? Is that Pacific time? Is that, is that Eastern time? And then sometimes the uh, scheduling programs try and help you and they don't make it any better. Uh, they just continue to make it worse. Stalin um, Greenwich Mean Time. What about, um, Jake, I know from uh, one of the things we talked about was making sure you have 
um, all of the plugins working and making sure that you can get out of um, firewalls and everything ahead of time. Um, what do you usually yep. find with uh, from the networking standpoint? Well, typically, I mean, if you're going to use, um, you know, a lot of the widely available ones like Skype and Zoom and stuff like that, typically they're going to be pretty firewall conscious and know that you may be traversing a firewall. So they've built everything on, you know, the ports that are already open, 8443, stuff like that, that every company already has open just to get to the Internet. Um, where it's going to come into play is if you're using a different solution like the life size or something where you're going to come in on a, on a custom port or you've got some custom piece of hardware you're going to use that might use um, a SIP or something like that, you're, you're going to need to work with your IT company and make sure that those ports are enabled outbound on your firewall ahead of time. Well, you can't always download and install software in a corporate environment, too. So sometimes these plugins are hard to get installed on the fly, right? Yep, yep. It might take a, an IT administrator or somebody with credentials to, you know, throw in their login so that you can even install the plugin. So, and I'll, sometimes the, I know, I know, just this do works it ahead with, of time. Don't um, do it the day of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I know, I know. Sometimes. I think it's Uber conference. You can get to the conference, but there's special plugins if you want to share your screen um, that on, in the middle of the meeting suddenly pop up and you, you, you can't share your screen. Man, that's one of the worst days of my, of my career this year so far was when I had a great presentation and I'm supposed to share my screen and the I'll leave the software unnamed needed a particular uh, app downloaded on my iOS device and um, I couldn't do it so I had to do it with you know a word document which was much less impactful I was very frustrated <laughs> you could always just hold your phone up to the webcam <laughs> yeah you could uh, you could no no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, someone actually commented online, and I apologize. I'm going to get your name. I'm going to try my best. It's Shamima Saeed. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. She had two questions. Uh, one of them was about uh, limiting distractions. She's a, she's a mom at home. She's got kids. The phone rings. Um, how, how do you minimize that, and how do you plan for that? Uh, Brandon, you're the one with, I think you have 12 kids at home right now. Um, how, how do you do that? How do you handle that when you're at home and the kids are there and you're having to deal with business issues? You know, like I think, I think it goes, and I think this is a good manager question too, in that I think there needs to be an expectation set and there needs to be a culture built, especially in this time where there's a lot of remote working and there's a lot of things that, that are, I mean, the, the situation's changing hour by hour, it feels like, in the last few days and maybe still for a few more days or weeks to come. We need to understand that we need to be a little bit more flexible and we need to be a little bit more um, helpful for our teams that are remote. They do have kids. They, their yeah. kids are out of school right now. Um, they are trying their best to stay connected to their work. They're trying their best to stay connected to their family. So I, I would say that to the management out there. That's one of the best things we can do right now is invest in our attitudes about what's going on and, and trying to be as supportive as we can for our people. And then for us that are working at home, right, I think it goes back to the first comment. I think you made it, Brent, where you said, you know, just own it. This is you're at yeah. home at your kitchen table and, and be honest about that with the, with the callers that you're talking to. Um, apologize ahead of time if you do have to step away um, or, you know, uh, just just try to uh, you can't deny that you're there. It'll look it'll look worse if you try to hide it. So um, obviously, you know, with with my kiddos, I try to you know, tell them, hey, look, dad's on the phone. Um, give me 30 minutes, give me 45 minutes. And that's another thing you can do. I think it's fair to set expectations of the people you're working with for hard stops. Um, and I think you have to, to control your time and to control your productivity. So if it's, you know, hey, I've got a hard stop in 30 minutes because that's as long as my kid will last, set that at the beginning of the meeting. Um, I understand that that's not always the case. And what I began with, managers that need to have the right attitude don't always have the right attitudes about this stuff. 
But I think that the more we communicate and the more honest we are about our situation and we show that we're making the best effort we can given the difficulties of the trials of the current time or whatever it is, then we've done as much as we can. So that's, that's my take on it. Also, I think, I think kind of the trajectory of, you know, today's culture dictates some of that as well. You know, most in, in, in a, you know, aside from, you know, today's environment where everyone's forced to be out, you know, because it's mandated by, you know, state and local, you know, governments um, in a typical workforce. So if you're, if you're permitted to work from home, um, you're, you probably work for a group that's a, that has a little more casual values. Um, yeah. And if you're, you know, based on the, the type of meeting it is, if you're having an internal meeting with your project team um, to, to collaborate or go over a project, it's probably a lot more acceptable to not worry as much about, you know, the, the appearance and all that. You can probably get away with shooing a kid off if they come in. Um, however, you work for a law firm and you're trying to work from home and you're trying to depose a, a client for a, you know, divorce settlement or something like that, that's, that's a lot more uh, rigid than, than in those cases, you probably conduct your meeting from the office. You probably wouldn't work from home that day. You know, if it's, if it's you know, your, your typical setup that you work from home, maybe that's the day that you go into the office and, and you kind of have to remove yourself from that. I would hope in today's environment, no matter what the situation is, if people are, are working from home, um, everyone's going to understand, you know, if you're a, if you're a single mom and you're home because your kid's uh, school is canceled and you have to get on a call and someone hears a baby cry or, you know, sees a you know, toddler come in and hand you their cereal, I would hope most people would have the understanding that that's kind of the, what we're in for the, you know, for now and the, the foreseeable near future. So, so I think kind of that level of, of, business that you work for dictates a lot of that too you know if you work for somewhere that's casual and you can come in and flip flops in a, a you know t-shirt they're probably not going to care if someone stumbles in and diaper they're probably going to laugh about it you know <laughs> but if you work for you know financial institution or, or law firm then, then you probably need to put a little more effort into adjusting that and, and you know making it more acceptable i guess and you know the other well, thing i'll and, add to um, that is Brandon that i will spend a lot of time in planning my meetings, I'll ask the person or the people that I'm with, hey, is it okay? Like, for example, I, I, I travel a lot, uh, obviously not this week or any time in the near foreseeable future, but there will be times when the only time I can have a meeting or have a conversation is when I'm at the airport, right? So I might let somebody know, hey, I'll be at the airport at 2 p.m. Would you mind if I called you from the airport? And I'll let them tell me, yeah, that's okay, or um, no, we need to. I need you a little more focused. Let's just do it another day or another time when you're able to sit at your desk. And I think that doing that is good. So you know, to that to that practical question there, like, so just just respond to the people, talk to your people. You know, hey, look, I'm I'm at home. This is the time when the kids are doing the schoolwork in the morning. We might get interrupted. Is that okay? Let them kind of have a little bit of control. Say, ah, you know what? Whenever you think you could have some more focus time, it would be better. I think that helps a lot, too. Yeah, I think that's good. Um, two of the other things that come up, one is leave the meeting when it's done. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been in a meeting and someone was sharing the screen, and I went back 10 minutes later, and I was still watching them respond to emails on the, on the screen. So... <laughs> Leave the meeting when it's done. Don't assume that your computer's going to hang up. Um, and and then on there, um, it's not as much on this meeting, but on some of them, uh, people are looking at you the whole time. Yeah. So <laughs> if you're distracted and walking around and looking back and forth, it's way more distracting than it is on a normal meeting. I mean, we haven't talked to Jake in 20 minutes, and he's still there paying <laughs> rapt attention to everything we're saying. Way to hang in, Jake. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I, it, it, it's really important that you stay connected even when you're not in the meeting. You can't really, you know, be down. It, it just it gets accentuated over video. Yeah, no, um, no, be that person. I, oh, can you repeat that? I didn't hear you. <laughs> well, what was that? I think we lost it. 
Oh, I said, yeah, you don't want to be that guy that says, oh, could you repeat the question? I didn't hear you. It's like, what were you doing that was better while I was talking than you? <laughs> and, you know, I think, Brent, one of the things that's really good to point out here in this is that Josh and Jake can both comment on this because of what they're working in. The technology that's available to businesses on the AV side and um, and on the the desktop technology that's available, um, the microphones are better. The cameras are better. Um, microphones are really good at canceling noise, uh, whereas they weren't even five six years ago. The cameras are really good at um, uh, you you can you you can get some that that have the shallow depth of focus, so you don't have that background that's distracting. Um, and, and, and I think that's one of the things that businesses can know. And again, if I go back to one of my first comments where it was like investing during the good times or, or when, when things are going well and you've got that extra cash or you've got that extra capital that you can invest in some of the technology and communication tools, um, it doesn't, you know, even it's, it's improved just in the last four or five years. So to talk to somebody like a Josh or a Jake about what's out there right now, even if your building was only built five years ago, um, it's still worthwhile because the technology is constantly improving and getting better at helping us do what it's designed to do, which is communicate and connect without the distractions and easily. You know, it's a, I, I wish I had all the webcams we've collected over the years. I, could, I should have brought them up. They're downstairs in the, in the junk closet. <laughs> but you can, you can look at them and you can see how much easier they are through the years to get connected to the computer and, and how much better they are in quality and in sound management and all that stuff. So I think that's worth mentioning in this is that the technology is constantly getting better, both in the hardware and software. I saw something the other day, uh, an advertisement for um, maybe it was Zoom. I can't remember who, who has a, a, an, an artificial intelligence that will blur the background for you, right? Once you've selected the primary person in the camera. So I, I think that's what's really worthwhile when it's really worthwhile talking to these integrators and these, these professionals. They can find those things that are out there. They know what's out there. And they can help um, those of us that may not know everything to 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 get answers to, to the right solutions. And that brings up uh, that that another answer to Shamima's question, and that is noise canceling headphones are also noise canceling microphones, mm -hmm. and they're a little expensive. But I know the Bose noise canceling headphones, the microphone on those it's like nothing's going on around you. So if you've got, if you're in a distracting environment, you have to be, if you get some of the newer noise canceling headphone microphones, um, it can eliminate all of that noise um, yeah. and really focus in and be much less distracting. And that, that's something I didn't think about before, but we've seen some really amazing microphones just on um, those um, consumer noise canceling headphones. Just make sure the batteries are charged. <laughs> Make sure the batteries are charged. <laughs> and I've seen Brandon go to his car even at work. So don't <laughs> underestimate the isolating capabilities of your car. Hey, one of the best sound studios you can ask for are cars with all that sound dampening stuff in them. So, yeah. Well, our time is kind of uh, running short here. Um, this has been a fantastic discussion. I know we've only really scratched the surface of this. Um, we'll send out kind of an FAQ and we'll continue to build that document. Uh, if you have any more questions or anything, you can continue, continue to send them in and we will connect back with you and really find a way to connect you with the people that know what they're talking about. Uh, join us. We'll do, be doing this again next week. Uh, like and subscribe and uh, share these comments with everybody and share these these uh, discussions with everyone. And we'll come together and find out a way for all of us to be smarter than a few of us. <laughs> We're all in this together, guys. Thanks for, thanks for your time, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.